Hello, everyone. Welcome. As we wait for everyone to join, um, how was your summer? Please put your answers in the chat. We also love for you to come on video if you're comfortable with it. What was one thing all of y'all did, uh, which was the highlight of your summer? If y'all could put that in the chat box. Nice, you travel to Phoenix, uh, Emily. So like you travel to meet your family or? Yeah, I went with my mom. Oh, that's amazing. Anybody else? Oh, I totally uh, relate with you on that, Amy, because I worked myself throughout the summer working on my portfolio. I think let's just wait for a minute or two more until if we have more people joining in, otherwise we can start in a minute or two. Oh my God, even I had gone to LA in May, I think, Michelle. When did you go? I think eBay we can start. Okay, yeah. So welcome everyone to the Figma Basics Workshop. Please let us know how experienced you are in Figma and we will have the poll up so you can um, answer the question. Oh, that is great because we're going to teach you everything from scratch. So, uh, okay, let's get started then. So before we start the workshop, let me start off with a round of introductions of our team. My name is Ibe Chen. I'm a junior majoring in comprehensive design and digital interactive media. Um, I'm also minoring in marketing. And today we have two other members on our team. Over to you, Sejal. Uh, hello, everyone. So I am the lead intern for the web design team, and I'm a first year graduate student studying human computer interaction design at the Ladi School of Informatics. And uh, over to you, Nasir. Hey, everybody. My name is Nasir. Um, I'm a first year intern. And my major is informatics. My cognates is human centered interaction. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, thank you everyone. Um, as part of CWIT, our mission is to empower women to be leaders in technical fields and to fully leverage technology to attain academic and professional excellence. Our teams hold a variety of events and workshops and everything design and technology related. So you're welcome to join our community by signing up for a mailing list to get updates about upcoming events and workshops. The links will be in the chat.
Okay, so let me start by first introducing you all to our uh, speaker and workshop facilitator, Akshay uh, Parak. Akshay is a first year graduate studying HCI at uh, IU as well. We are classmates actually. And other than that, he also has experience working as a user experience designer at Deloitte India. So for, without further ado, let me hand it over to Akshay. Hi everyone, this is Akshay. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to be walking you through the basics of Figma today. Um, now to give you a brief introduction about Figma, um, it is a, a digital design tool which allows you to create uh, any kind of digital product that you see out there in the market today, be it an app or a website, or you could also use it to create presentations or social media posts. And uh, one thing I would like to say about Figma is that Figma, uh, there were quite a lot of design tools before Figma as well, like Sketch, um, Adobe XD. But what made Figma really popular is that uh, it added like collaboration capabilities to design tools which never existed before. Uh, to give you a reference, uh, what Google Docs allows you to do instead of Word, it allows you to collaborate with different people. Think of Figma the same way when, when it comes to the design tools industry. Um, so uh, I'll quickly start sharing my screen and uh, show you the basics of the interface. Um, so Figma has its own native app for iOS and, uh, sorry, for uh, Mac OS and Windows as well, but uh, it's basically a web-based tool. So you will get to use the same capabilities even if you go on to figma.com. Um, before I ask all of you to go to figma.com, I'll just walk you through the basics of Figma today. Um, so when you first load up figma.com and assuming that you have not created any designs in Figma, uh, it will uh, show you uh, the recent page, uh, which is gonna be this page, which will have all of your designs. And uh, if you are new to Figma, this page will be blank and there'll be an option to either create a design file or a fix jam file. Uh, when you click create a design file, this is what you will see as part of Figma interface. And uh, here you will see that uh, Figma has created a page for us, which they have named as page one by default. When you click on it, it opens the page panel for you on the left side. Um, you can double click on the page name to rename it to whatever you want. You can create a new page by clicking on the plus icon. Um, and you can rearrange a page by dragging and dropping it to whatever position you want. Um, and uh, this on the right side is an inspector panel, uh, which will show the properties of whatever you are creating in Figma. Uh, so right now we haven't created anything. So it is just showing me the property of the blank canvas or the page, which is the background color. And you can go ahead and change the background color as well. Uh, so I'd recommend you to keep it to the default because that is the best suited for designs for white and black elements. Um, so let's switch to the design file that we have created for the presentation purposes. Uh, as you can see, we have created pages on the right, uh, left side. Um, and this is a blank page, um, where I'm going to be introducing you to different elements and objects in Figma. So, uh, we saw how to create pages, rename them, rearrange them or change the background for pages. Now let's switch to the most basic uh, element in Figma, which is frames. Um, on the top left side, you will see that there are different tools available in the toolbar, right? From the move scale tool to frames, slice, different kinds of shapes, um, the pen and pencil tool, the type tool. This is quite basic if you, are, if you have used any kind of design software before. Um, to get started, uh, the first and foremost thing we are going to do is create a frame. Now, when you click on the frame tool, you can either select it from the toolbar or you can just press the F key on your keyboard, which is the frame key shortcut. Uh, and as soon as you choose the frame tool, you will be presented with a predefined set of devices on the right side. Um, you can choose 
if you are designing an app or a mobile version of a website, you can choose from any device, right? From iPhone to any Android device. Um, for tablets, right? From iPad to Surface devices. For desktops, iMacs, MacBooks. Um, you can also create presentations with specific aspect ratios. You can also create apps for Apple Watch. Um, or if you are creating a document, you can choose any size, right? From A4 to tabloid. And it also allows you to create social media posts for Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn covers, etc. Um, so if I don't want to choose any of these predefined ones, I can just drag and drop my mouse to create a random frame. But if I want to choose a predefined set, uh, I, I'll just go ahead and choose iPhone 11 Pro Max for presentation purposes here. Now, as I said, like whatever you are creating in Figma, be it an object or an element, as soon as you create it and you select it, the inspector panel changes its interface and shows you the properties which are relevant to that selected object. Uh, so as you can see, we are presented with the position values, which is the X and Y value. If I go ahead and change that, uh, it will reposition the frame to the zero and zero, uh, like zero, zero values of X and Y axis on that page. Um, you can also modify the height and width from here or you can alternatively also modify it with your mouse by hovering your mouse over the edges of the frame and this is how you can resize the frame now you'll see a link icon on the right which also allows you to lock the aspect ratio so if you're going to be doubling up the uh, width it will automatically double up the height as well and it will resize that frame proportionately but if you unlock it, um, you can again resize it as a freeform object. Uh, it won't lock the proportions for you. And then there are some basic customizations like you can set an angle to a frame or you can also add like a curved radius to a frame. Like if you want to be really realistic about your designs and you are designing for something like an iPhone, which has a curved display, you want to make sure that there's no content on your design, which is spilling out of the curved edges. So uh, you can find all these properties on the right side in the inspector panel. And there are some advanced properties as well, which we won't be covering in today's event, like clip content or auto layout or layout grids, which we'll be covering in a future event as part of Figma advanced uh, session. Uh, the other basic property I would like to introduce you to is the fill and stroke property, which allows you to change the color of the background of the frame. So you will see like a six digit alphanumeric number over here, alphanumeric uh, like code over here and associated percentage value. And as soon as you click on this square, which represents the color, it allows you to pick any color and also allows you to change the U in terms of scale. And uh, as you will see, like uh, as I'm changing these colors, the six digit alphanumeric code is also changing at the bottom correspondingly. Uh, so this is basically like a unique code given to each and every color on the color spectrum, which a computer display can show. Um, and uh, the percentage value corresponds for the opacity, which is basically the transparency value of that object, which I'll introduce you to shortly. Uh, but for presentation purposes, let's just go ahead and keep the fill of the frame background to white. And I'll be introducing you to strokes and effects as uh, I talk more about shapes. So that's about the frame. Now I want to talk about like the basic interaction. So if you are currently using Figma on a laptop, which has a trackpad, uh, you can just pinch in and pinch out using two fingers to zoom in and zoom out. Alternatively, if you are using a mouse right now, you can just use control plus to zoom, control minus to zoom out. On Windows. on Windows? Akshay, we have a question in the chat okay. box. Yep, yep. How did you curve the edges? Yep. So, yep. so if you select a frame, you will see a corner radius property in the inspector panel and you can go ahead and set a radius to it. So this is uh, the output after setting the radius. So that's how you change it. So uh, basically, whatever object or element you are creating in Figma, you have to select that object and you can customize all its properties on the inspector panel on the right side. 
also uh, sorry to interrupt you yeah. in case yeah. any of you all have any questions at any point of the time during the presentations just feel free to get yourself off mute or put it in the chat box we'll most definitely answer it as soon as we see it sure um so uh, obviously you can pinch in or pinch out to zoom uh, you can use control plus to zoom in control minus to zoom out or command plus command minus on mac um, you can also uh, one more interaction i would like uh, to talk about is whenever you are creating an element or object in figma you can select it and while pressing the alt key on windows or the option key on mac you can keep it like you can hold the option key and you can drag that object uh, to create a duplicate of it. So you can also do this by just control, like control C, control V, copy paste, uh, but you can also duplicate it using the alt key. And the last interaction I want to talk about is whenever you have selected a specific element or object in Figma, uh, you keep pressing the alt or the option key on your keyboard and you hover your mouse over any other element, it will give you the distance value uh in terms of pixels how far it is from the corresponding object uh so that's about the basic interactions now let's talk about shapes so uh, as you can see the toolbar has all kinds of different shapes but i'm going to be talking about the two basic ones that we mostly use in design which is the rectangle and the ellipse um, so when i click on the rectangle tool i can also alternatively just press the r key on the keyboard to select the rectangle tool and then i am presented with uh, 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 like a cursor which allows me to create a random rectangle on the frame and i can just go ahead and create a random one right now again uh, if i have not selected it it will just show me the the inspector panel will just show me the properties of the page but as soon as i select this rectangle it will just show me the properties of this rectangle now these x and y values are uh with reference to the frame not the page so if i go ahead and select zero zero it will take the top left corner of the frame as the starting point for the, both the axes so this is the position of this is relative to the frame and the width and height it acts just like the frame you can also go ahead and create uh, a square by using the same uh, values for height and width and you can lock it in place so whenever you're going to be resizing it it will automatically resize proportionately and uh, again you can also set an angle to it or add like a corner radius to it uh, so one thing which you can do for the shape and not the frame is that you can obviously customize the corner radius by manually entering a value here also you see when you hover your mouse over the object you will see like uh, a circle icon on the on the edges which will allow you to manually you know sometimes you don't get a get an idea of how much the corner radius should be but when you do this manually you get a better idea as to how much you want it to be like so this is also one way of interacting um and other properties that we can see the fill property is the same as the frame you can go ahead and choose any color you want uh, uh, the, the second property that I want you uh, like, want to talk, talk about is the, uh, opacity, which is basically like, if you have two overlapping shapes, uh, you'll see that there's no kind of transparency effect, which is being created right now. And if I want to create something like that in my designs, I can just like reduce the opacity, which is basically the lesser the opacity the more transparent your object gets and it allows you to give like a see-through effect through your object so this is how you can uh, create uh, the transparency effect by modifying the opacity of an object um, and again uh, there's something called a stroke so um, I, I am pretty sure most of you might be aware about it it's basically like an outline you can modify uh, like how how many pixels do you want that border to be like how thick should it be also should that border be on the inside or the outside or the center of the object um and there are different kinds of effects so for example if i had like a white background 
I, I am not able to differentiate it from the like the uh, frame background that I have, which is also white. But uh, I can create all kinds of different like inner shadow, which gives it like a bevel effect or a drop shadow, uh, which allows it to stand out even though the background color is the same. And then when you click on this icon, you also can edit the properties of the drop shadow. So how much blur do you want to add to it? Or you, there's also an opacity associated with the uh, drop shadow property. So you can see like this is a very, very strong drop shadow versus this is a very subtle one. So that's how you can use different kinds of properties to create and customize shapes in Figma. Um, there's also an ellipse tool, which you can also open up by just uh, pressing the O key on your keyboard. And again, uh, since it's like an ellipse, uh, so first of all, I created it by holding the shift key. But if I hadn't hold like uh, held the shift key, it would have created uh, an ellipse for me, not a circle. Uh, but as soon as I hold the shift key, it locks the width and height in position. Uh, so that's about shapes. Um, and there's also all kinds of different arrangements and uh, alignment properties available. So for example, if I, uh, as I showed earlier, you can create a duplicate by, uh, also one more thing I forgot to talk about. So you can also customize one specific corner radius too. So like if you just, uh, do this, it will automatically uh, change it for all the four corners. But if you hold down the Alt key, it will allow you to change it just for that corner. Or you can also select this icon on the right side of the corner radius property to just like give specific corner radius values to each shape. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the effect. I'm going to go ahead and change the color. And let's show you a uh, different things we can do with the alignment. Uh, so let's say that these objects were aligned randomly right now. And you go ahead and select these. Uh, you can, you, when, whenever you're selected multiple objects in Figma, it will present you with a set of alignment options on the top right side of the inspector panel. So you can go ahead and align it to the left, which will align it to the leftmost object, to the right, to the top, uh, to the bottom and uh, also center align it or horizontally center it. Um, and the last option is distributing. So for example, let's say we had one more uh, object here and these objects are not distributed at equal distances. So first thing I'm going to do is like center align them horizontally. And then I'm going to go ahead and say, distribute horizontal spacing. So now you can see that it has distributed them at a one pixel distance from each other. So that's how you can distribute them, distribute them at equal distances. And uh, other thing is creating a mirror uh, by flipping it either horizontally, you can access different actions you can perform on an object by right clicking on it and you'll see like a flip horizontal option or a flip vertical option. Um, and Figma will also give you the shortcut associated to each action on the right. So you will get more faster at using Figma. Um, and the last thing, uh, the last two things I want to talk about in shapes is the arrangement and grouping. So if for like, for example, if we had two objects, uh, and I want to bring the object, which is behind to the front. You can right click on it and you'll see like bring to front versus bring to back. So if I want to just bring it one layer above, I'll just say bring to front and it will bring this object on the top. Um, alternatively, I would use something like bring to forward if there were like multiple layers on top of it. And I just want to bring it to the topmost layer and the vice versa works for send to back and send backward. And the last thing is about grouping. So if for say we had like different um, objects and this is something which uh, like this is either a part of my logo or this is a part of uh, like 
uh, I want to I want to associate it with a group. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all these objects together, and I'm going to say uh, I'm going to right click and uh, create a like I'm going to select group selection. So whenever I'm going to be moving this, it's going to move as a group. And if I want to edit something, I'm just going to right click, uh, sorry, double click. And then I can go inside the group and change every specific object. You can also group it by using the shortcut command G or control G and ungroup it by uh, control shift G or command shift G. So we learn uh, why groups are specifically used in design. Um, and the last thing we are going to be talking about today is the type tool, which is basically it allows you to add text to your designs and um, uh, you can customize it in different ways. So now that my text is selected, uh, you will see that I obviously have all these properties, but I have the option to change the font. Um, I have the option to change the weight. So I can make it bold or italic. Um, I can also go ahead and change the font size. Uh, so if we had multiple lines of text um, like these, I can also change the line height like this. Uh, I can just drag and drop my mouse over this or I can like enter a manual value over here. Uh, I can do the same for letter spacing, spacing, which will allow me to add more space between different alphabets. And uh, if for say, I increase the bounding box, which is uh, like sometimes in design, you want to limit yourself, your text to a specific width. So this is uh, the fixed size property, which will wrap around the text if it goes beyond a specific width. So for say, I, keep pasting or I keep typing, it will wrap the text uh, accordingly and it will not let anything spill out of that bounding box. Um, but if I had something like this and my box was bigger, so if I just have hello world, but my box is bigger, I can just like either set it to auto width, which will uh, keep it to the least, uh, sorry, auto height, which will reduce the height and width to the specific verbiage that we have used. Uh, and the same goes for auto width. And if we had a larger box, we can also set the text alignment horizontally by bringing it to the center or the right, or vertically by bringing it to the middle or the bottom, like this. And then um, there's stroke and fill for the type tool as well. and last thing is you can go ahead and explore this whenever you will be learning figma is that when whenever you click on uh, these uh, this three dot icon you can you will be presented with another set of text properties which is like decoration underline strike through uh, line styles adding bullets or uppercase lowercase so subscript superscript all this is possible in figma using the type tool um so yeah um so uh if we have time i can use two minutes to introduce them to the pen tool as well but if we don't we can switch to the collaboration mode i think you can introduce them to the pen tool okay, okay. so um if you have used any other design software before i'm pretty sure you are familiar with it but pen tool is basically a tool which allows you to create custom shapes in figma um, so, um, we are not going to be using the pen tool today, but you can go ahead and explore it by yourself. It allows you to create like different, uh, intersection points for a shape and then change the curvature corresponding to each point like this. So let's say I have created the shape, but now I, I see that like, uh, there's a bend tool available, which after creating the shape, it allows you to convert it to a pointed or a curved point. And you can also go ahead and modify the curvature associated with each point. So if for say you had to create a logo, uh, which has uh, a curve in it, something like the Apple logo. So you can use, you can also combine different shapes, like different circles and create it. But for custom curvatures, you can use something like a pen tool. Um, so yeah, that's about it. 
Um, so uh, we have created a different page uh, yeah. which will allow us to collaborate and, and we create a website for today's uh, presentation. We are going to be using uh, this as an example, which is the Apple Store's website. Uh, and so this is the original version of it. Uh, have we deleted that? Let me just over this. I think you can show them on the website also. Okay, okay yeah, and that will be better. Meanwhile, uh, we've dropped the link to the Figma file in the chat box. So y'all can um, click on the link, just put in your email ID and sign up and y'all will be able to work on the exact same file as Akshay is working on. Yep, so you can go ahead, uh, open up the link uh this is what you will be presented with you can go ahead and uh select the collaboration page on the left side um uh if you see we have created a uh, artboard so you can just rename one of the artboard by your name and um before like uh just rename it so that uh, when akshay starts explaining you all can start working on your personal artboards okay so uh, if you can quickly just switch to my screen for a minute my screen sharing for a minute uh, you will see that this is the apple store website that apple recently introduced and we are not going to be recreating the entire thing uh, and the purpose behind recreating an existing website is that even like most designers, when they start, uh, I've seen that once they are able to recreate something that is out there in the market, uh, they get a, like a good confidence boost and it gives them that, you know, uh, ability or like basically they start thinking that if I can create something like this, I can create basically anything I can imagine or any idea that I have in the future. So we are just going to be learning Figma as of now. So that's why we are going to be recreating it. And this is the original version of the Apple Store website. Uh, for uh, recreation purposes, we are not, we are going to be skipping some basic parts like this one and the subheader. Uh, and uh, just so that it seems uh, less intimidating to you we are just going to be creating this first component and then just create a duplicate of it change the text and the image same goes for this we are just going to be creating one and then just duplicating it change that image and the text so uh yep uh is everyone here i i just see I, I, uh, are you guys able to access the Figma file? Were you all able to sign in to the Figma uh, software, the web-based software or? I think let's give them a minute to see if uh they're signing in and that might take a minute i guess so we have posted the figma link in the zoom chat um if for some reason you are not able to open it up or you don't get access to it let us know we can help you get in
Should we get started? I think, yeah, uh, before you get started, um, just go ahead and uh, rename the uh, artboard. When you all uh, zoom into uh, either of the white boxes, you will be able to see that on the tap top left corner, there is Apple uh, store website already written. So we have already created these uh, artboards for you. Just double click on them and rename them to your name just for your sake so that you know that which is your artboard in case you zoom out. Yes. And uh, like how to start and all of that, Akshay will definitely explain. So yeah, I think you can start. Were all of y'all able to get an artboard and rename it? Give us a thumbs up in the uh, chat or anything so that we know we can move forward. Would y'all also want us to go a little more slower or faster? Or is this space okay? Okay. So I think Akshay, you can start by like letting them know like how to start and all that. Yep. So we Also, I think it would be really helpful for y'all if whenever Aksha is explaining, y'all can be on his screen and then we'll give you time to go back to your screens and uh, work on them again. And meanwhile, if y'all have any questions when he's speaking, if he's going too fast or if he's going too slow or if he's going just about right, just let us know like in the chat box or come off mute. Is he talking right now? Because I don't hear, I don't hear, I don't, I don't hear him. Yeah, I can't hear him either. Should we start again by explaining? So if you guys... Akshay, I think they cannot hear you properly. I, are you muted? Oh, sorry. For that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, my bad. I was on mute. So uh, you can go ahead and click on the text tool um, and type the same verb uh, stores the place, the best way to buy the products you love, right? The best way to buy the products you love so as i 
said if you have the san francisco front perfect if you don't use helvetica or arial uh create this text once you have this text in place go ahead and uh change the font weight to something which is similar to bold or semi bold on the right side and the font size somewhere around 48 um perfect so even if it does not look the same it's perfectly fine um and uh we are going to make sure that the second like the sentence that we have after the word store we are using the gray hex code for it so you can go ahead and choose like any gray for that matter which is slightly like a dark gray not black um we we have we actually have also, also added, added uh, rectangles, rectangles of the, of the colors used colors in the design, the design right above the right artboard above the so you all can also so use also the color picker the color tool, picker to, tool to, to choose the choose color the, um, akshay can show you that show again you if you want yep so if you want to just change the fill color of a specific part of that text you can like select that text and you will scroll down in the inspector panel you can click on the fill and there will be like an eyedropper tool inside it select that and you hover your mouse over the swatch that is above your frame and choose that color specific color so that now you will see that it has picked the same color and it has allowed you to change the color of the font um so yep and then um yeah you can uh, align it uh, to the specific x and y value if you really want to be like ex- you want to create the exact same uh, thing uh, or you can like keep it like to a specific distance from the left and the top uh the other thing that we see is that the apple store website is not using a white background and obviously you can see that the white elements are standing out slightly more so this is the hex code that they are using uh which is f5 f5 f7 you can go ahead select a frame uh edit the fill to f5 f5 f7 mm-hmm. as well or you can also uh copy paste it from one of the rectangles yeah. that there above the your article second rectangle yep boy you are able to do that yep for you all able to do that, that. like okay. three people two people have already done it yep so the next thing that we are going to do is create a rectangle first and then add rounded corners so you can choose the rectangle tool you can create any random shaped rectangle and then we are going to modify the width of that rectangle first which is 136 pixels so you can keep it somewhere around that value and the height to be 148 pixels um again like somewhere around that value also works and the next thing we are going to do is change the rounded radius to 18 um or you can also manually choose the rounded radius value that you cho- like prefer uh and i think all of you all try and come to akshay screen uh, in figma or uh, the zoom screen So, so like, like even if you are not, not able, able to do the entire thing today, today it's okay just, just see how he does so that it will be so easier for you all to go, go back to your artboards and do them again yeah so uh as you saw i just created a rectangle uh 
you can also there's also one more thing about figma is that if you right click on a specific object it not only allows you to copy paste that object it also allows you to copy the properties of that object so when i right click it i say copy properties and i paste it on some other object it will you'll see that it has automatically used the same rounded corners for me uh, so for uh, quite a lot of elements that we are going to create today you can copy the properties for reference but when you are creating your own designs uh, uh, you can also use it to apply a property that you have used on an existing element it can also apply for something like text so for say if i have created a different text uh, which has a completely different font and a completely different size if i just copy copy the properties uh, and paste it over here it will automatically keep it like duplicate the same properties for this specific text layer uh, okay so back to creating the rectangle uh, go ahead and create a rectangle uh, add rounded corners to 18 radius and you can choose uh, to keep the width somewhere around 140 or 136 and height somewhere around 150 doesn't have to look the same so it's fine and then yeah i i see that yeah and just make sure that you have uh aligned this rectangle to the same so whenever you will be if you can switch to my screen again uh wherever you have placed this text on your artboard uh just make sure that when like you whenever you're moving this rectangle right it will give you a guideline to make sure that it's aligning to the left side of the text. So let's make sure that it is at least aligning to the text. So from there, the carousel will start. And then we are going to go ahead and uh, add the Mac image that you see on the top of your frame, which is this one. We're going to copy that image, click on this rectangle, paste it inside. You'll see that it has pasted it randomly somewhere outside the rectangle you can drag and drop it bring it inside the uh, rectangle you will see that when you are moving it figma again gives you guidelines so let's make sure that it is centered to the box um, and we are going to create one more text layer inside it so again selecting the text tool um, and saying uh, like let's type out mac and we want a smaller font size something like this um on the original one they have used a 13 font size sf pro medium so if you have the font or something similar let's try to replicate that excuse um, me um could you show us how to bring the you'll also see that if you start off with a higher font size and then you reduce the font the box is still bigger so to fix that you can go ahead and choose auto height uh, or sometimes auto height does not apply if the font size was already bigger and then you made it smaller so you can just use the same font size value for the property of line height so if i go ahead and define line height as 13 as well it will uh, reduce the bounding box uh, so this will allow you to align it better in the future so do we have do you all have any questions anything with respect yeah. to the image the box the, the text, anything anything can you show us how to bring the mac icon so, uh one second so let's just like um uh, make sure that they have this one element created properly because once that is in place all the other like uh elements will be a duplicate of it so just give me one minute okay yeah my friend had a question
can you show us again how to bring the Mac icon? Because when I okay. bring it to uh, my so, square, it's um, behind it. It's not showing in the front. Uh, I right clicked um, and I selected bring I'm, forward and that didn't work either. Joshua, Michelle. Um, Joshua, the bottom right hand corner at the very bottom. Emily. Yeah. So in Emily's, uh, so uh, guys, if you can pause for a second and switch back to my screen. Uh, uh, Joshua, for you, you you can drag and drop this image on top of this one. Um, let me just grab you another image for it. I think it's currently being shown in a... And then now you see that it's hiding behind this object. So we are going to go ahead and bring it to the front so that we are able to uh, re like reposition it uh, with respect to... Okay, so I think the reason why you're not able to do that is because... Uh, yeah, I'm just like... I think he is, yep. If I'm able to bring it to the front, no. I think this rectangle is outside your frame. Yep, now you should be able to proceed. Um, yeah, so you can go ahead and center the image, add a text below it. Um, for Michelle, uh, you can uh, narrow down your text width like this, and then you can just drag and drop it inside the box. If you want, you can I add more height to this box so that you can accommodate the text below it. Um, And for Emily, I think the only thing Emily needs to do is to increase the height like this. Um, I'll undo it so you can do it. And then uh, the text should be inside that box. Uh, and then you can go ahead and make reduce the opacity of the box. Uh, before you do that, I would recommend you to, if you can switch to my screen once again, I'd recommend you to select all the three layers, the text layer, the image, and the background, then press press control G or command G, group it up. And uh, you can either double click to go inside the group, select the background, and reduce the opacity all the way to zero. Uh, or you can also make it the same as the background color uh, so that it's not visible. So now, uh, before you go ahead and proceed do that uh, you will see that like this allows me to just duplicate it and then i can just go ahead and change the image and the text later so we have we just need to make sure that this one component is made properly do you all want to go ahead and like spend some time on your screen and do it let us know when you're ready so that we can move forward actually we have we're very close to the close time, but we can extend it by 10 minutes or 15 minutes if y'all are willing to work. And then we can stay around and answer any doubts if y'all have. Yep. I see Michelle has already done it. Emily, uh... So Michelle, has Michelle created a group? Nope. Okay. Nasir is, yep, not done. So guys, I think, yeah, Joshua, uh, Joshua, the only thing you would need to do is like select all these three layers press command G or control G, group them up and then duplicate it. Yep, I see you have created a group. So Joshua is sorted. Michelle, 
uh, I think is there a rectangle behind yeah and is it a group no it's not so if you can just if you can just switch to my screen quickly you will just need to select all these three layers and again group it up Control G or Command G. Yep, perfect. And then I think Emily, the same for you. Uh, and once you have grouped it, you can reduce the opacity of the uh, rounded rectangle. And I think same for um yeah. Nazir, yeah uh joshua i'd recommend you to delete this one uh because we are going to be replicating the mac box first and then we we will uh so we will uh just replicate this component so that it makes our workflow faster so if you uh, if we spend time recreating it again and again, it will also uh, like uh, make our workflow slower. Uh, cool. I think everyone is uh, Emily needs to group these uh, by selecting all of them. Nazir needs to group these. Um, I think Michelle and Joshua are on the same page. So if you guys can uh, quickly switch to my screen, I'm uh, just gonna like show uh, how replicating this can make our workflow faster. So on the original website, they have used like a distance of 10 pixels between each box. So I am, as I showed earlier, I'm gonna be using the Alt key to create a duplicate and while doing that i'm also pressing the shift key so that it duplicates and moves in the same line uh, so and one more thing about figma is that once you have created a duplicate it saves the information of how long it was from the original one so once you create a single instance of a duplicate you will just need to press ctrl d or command d to keep repeating that pattern so this is how you can create multiple duplicates which is at the same angle from the original one so if you if you guys can see has created a pattern for me do you all want akshay to repeat that again yeah so just a second um if y'all could just quickly come back to Zoom, he can show y'all again like how to do it. Yeah. I all on his screen. I mean on Zoom. Yeah, I think Joshua was able to do it properly. Um May, we'll need to make sure that uh, we have created a group otherwise we won't be able to duplicate it exactly like how it looks on the website so um, uh, for uh, should I go ahead and uh, do the grouping for Emily and Nazir so that they can proceed no, I think uh, let the them thing try is, it out. Uh, yeah, because, yeah, because uh, Emily, uh, Emily and Nazir, Nazir, if you can just see the screen, see, the screen, see, my, screen see my screen right now. Right now. Uh, so, uh, so I'm just going to be using Emily's, Emily's as an example. So, so the first, the first thing, thing that we'll need, need to do is if we can like just uh, select the text, the image and the rounded rectangle, all three of them, and then just press command G or control G so that it creates a group like this 
So whenever we'll be moving it or duplicating it, it will duplicate entirely as a group. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think Emily, you have yeah, you can. So this is the group element you have created. I'm go. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the rest of them because uh, we won't need those. And Emily, you can go ahead and drag and drop it to the left side over here. Perfect. Uh, Nazir, were you able to do the same? uh so yeah you can just like select all sorry um i think what's going wrong with nazir is that uh he is doing it on a rectangle and not a frame so what i'm going to do nazir is i'm going to lock your rectangle behind so that every time you're moving something the rectangle does not move as well um yep so nazir i think now you will be able to select this like this yeah and then you can go ahead and group it. That is what was going wrong with Nazir's frame. Not, not, not both of those. Just the Mac, uh, the yeah, image and the background. And press Control G or Command G. So this is for reference. Yep. And then Nazir, uh, if I, if I uh, if I may, I can I will just go ahead and delete this because we don't need to recreate it. Uh, we have the first one in place. Yep. And the only thing that is uh, that might go wrong here is that the width of this text is bigger than what it needs to be. So you can select the text. And this is how you will set the width for it. So this will make your job much easier. Now that this one component has been created, right? So guys, if you can switch to my screen for a minute, uh, I'm going to be using this group, right? Uh, so I, first of all, I'm going to select it. And while pressing the option and shift key, if you are on Mac or Alt and Shift key on the Mac, I'm just gonna drag and drop it until it says 10. Once I'm there, I have released all my fingers. I've released all like from the keys and the trackpad. I just need to press Command D or Control D and then it will keep repeating that pattern like this. So let me know if you were able to do it or would need my help. Joshua, I think, yeah, Joshua has been able to. Um, Michelle. Uh, so Michelle, I'd recommend you to not recreate it so you can actually get rid of, you can just delete these two if you, if you can see my screen. You wouldn't need to create it again. So if you can just go ahead and delete it completely. Emily, for you, I would also recommend you to delete this part completely. Not the top one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can delete that. I think while you are dragging, you are also selecting the top one. So, yeah. Yeah, you can delete this. Now, uh, you can select your, this is a group, right? Yeah, you can go ahead and select it. And then uh, shift plus alt or shift plus option if you are on Mac. Keep both those keys hold it like uh, and then just drag and drop your mouse to create a duplicate. Or you can just control C, control V and then bring it to the same. So alternatively, if this interaction was slightly complicated for you, I'd recommend you to and you are not able to like figure it out. 
I I would recommend you to delete everything that is on your frame except for the first group that you created. Just select it, Control C, Control V. It will paste it on top of the same group, and then just like drag and drop it. Keep doing Control C, Control V, drag and drop it, drag and drop it. So that's how you will create like a duplicate of it. But don't make new ones. Just use the original group that we created for Mac. Make like keep making copies of it so that we don't have to recreate new ones. Yep. Yeah. I think this this was slightly better to understand, right? Yep. I think Emily is doing really good. Nazir is stuck. We we'll get to Nazir. Michelle is doing really good. Joshua is also doing really good. Uh, for Nazir, I'd recommend that the yeah. So Nazir, if you can see my screen again, uh, we you can get rid of. First of all, there's a hidden box which you are not seeing right now. So you can drag and drop your mouse, select that and delete it, and then we we are going to create a group of this like this, and then just like using Command D, we have made like made different copies of the same or you can just use control c control v for this one so nazir if you can go ahead and select this use control c control v and create multiple copies of it So I think Sejal, we are uh, slightly short on time, right? So, we have we have five minutes. So if you all if you want to go ahead and show them the last component that is there, you all can quickly see the last component. Uh, see Akshay made the last component, and uh, yeah, like you, you all will always have access to this file. So you all will, you all can keep working on it. And if you all have any doubt, you all can email me. I can get in touch with you and like help you out if you want. So I think just watch yeah. Akshay on his like on the Zoom screen and watch him make the last component so that you all will understand how to make the uh, yeah. card. So as I, so as I said, guys, this this might slightly seem intimidating at first, and uh, if this is your first time using any design tool, it might take time to get used to it. We are just here to explore. Um, but once you get used to it, uh, believe me, you will be able to recreate any design in a very short amount of time or even create your own designs. So uh, I'm again going to switch back to what we had created. This is, you can see this is a group which has a text, which has a rectangle uh, behind and a rectangle which has an image inside it. So uh, we have, it's just that we have made the rectangle transparent that's why we don't see the background right so we have this group and the purpose of a group is that we are able to move it as a group we don't need to move the image the text and the background differently so now that we have this group as i said we can just copy paste it by using Control c Control v and then dragging it or alternatively figma as you will use figma more and more you will know that if you can create a duplicate using while holding your option key and dragging and dropping your mouse you can this is a very convenient way of creating uh duplicates in figma and if you just hold down the option key it will create a duplicate to wherever you want it to be like but if you create hold the shift key it will just go in either a vertical line or a horizontal line so quickly uh, once you have done that you just need to either use control D or command D to create duplicates. And then the only thing that you need to keep changing is for say, I'm gonna select this layer. So you can, you can to either go into this, you can just like double click, go inside the group again, double click, change the text. Now you see that like it's wrapping to a different line because, uh, the original text was a shorter one. You can select this, 
you can make it auto width the other thing that we did wrong here was that we did not center uh define it at the center if you had done that it would have made sure that it is also centrally aligned to this box so for example if i go ahead and select this as centrally aligned and i make a copy of it um i go ahead and say iphone you'll see that it's still centrally aligned to the rectangle like this so that's how you can keep replicating uh editing the text and the image you can just like grab the iphone image that we have here and then just um get rid of the old one so this is for the first component you can keep repeating this for all the other ones uh alternatively the last thing i would like to say is that you can just right click on it and uh the web version does not allow you to replace an image but if you are using the native app you can just click replace image and you can choose your file browser to keep replacing images and i'm going to go ahead and create the last component uh which is basically a rectangle of a specific height and width uh so i'm going to go ahead say that the height is 500 and the width is 400 it is once i've created that i'll just make sure that it is sent like left aligned to the text and the carousel that we have created on top uh the uh so the rectangle that we created earlier had a rounded radius of 18 so we are again going to define that same here and i'm just going to like use this image on top f i'm just going to drag and drop it on top of the rectangle uh so there is something which is called a mask which we'll introduce you to in a, in a advanced session but you can also go ahead and define the rounded radius for an image 18 so this is how you can use the image and then uh we can use some text uh which is which can be anything you want uh, for now we'll just use something like this and you see that there's a headline which is slightly you know which has a slightly higher font value um and it is bold so this is how you can create something similar to this and once you have uh, and then again there's a sub headline um so if for say we created this component right um and uh again i select all of them i group them up and then i uh either just option shift duplicate and then press command d or i can just like copy paste it drag it copy paste it drag it and then you can change the text and the images according to whatever the headline is going to be so 18 18 and then you can go ahead and change the text and if you want to make it stand out more the last thing i would show is you would just want to add to the rectangle uh so this has like a image and a rectangle behind it and it's completely grouped 
so you can like uh, one more thing figma allows you to do is you can right click on it and the first thing it shows is select layer so you can also select a specific layer from here and then you can add an effect drop shadow so now you see that if you compare the first one and the second one the first one stands out slightly more than the second one because um even though the background is not completely the same it is somewhere in the same color spectrum so you can use drop shadows to make your elements stand out more on your designs so yep you can we'll we'll keep this link open to all of you and you can keep exploring it keep you know as you like do different iterations trying to recreate the same thing can i would one thing i'd recommend is you can always this is the original artboard you can always select anything a rectangle or an image or text always keep an eye on the inspector panel try to make sure that your properties are almost similar to these so that that's how you will be able to recreate it and uh, you can also create ios icons uh, like any kind of icons to be like anything like uh, it can be to do with logos or uh, basically anything that falls under vector graphics so um, you can also keep exploring by you know just like dragging and dropping a screenshot on your figma page try to recreate icons ios icons or uh, icons you see on your android phone that is also how you will get to learn how you can uh, uh, and you will also notice that your workflow will get faster with time as you explore shortcuts and uh, different tips uh, like tips and tricks that figma has to offer so yep we can stick around for a few minutes if you all uh, if you really want to spend some time on the artboard feel free to like ask us any questions if you all have about the design or anything figma related also like before i conclude uh, you can all like you can all stay updated again uh, for our upcoming events uh, you can sign up for the mailing list the link to which i am dropping in the chat box and it would really, really mean a lot to us if you all could just uh, click the link uh, feedback link in the chat box and let us know what you all think about the workshop this really helps us uh, plan our workshops better and more to what you all expect and want to learn so yeah like feel free to go ahead and ask us any questions we can stick around for maybe 3 4 minutes more also if uh, yep i think yeah i think until someone asks a question i can just like pull this in really quick so uh, if you are really really keen on learning figma figma also has 